Well, welcome to Tender Loving Care. We are down at Artistry on Main Street, and I'm very pleased to have with us Ann Beardsley, probably one of the best artists as far as I've ever seen for pine basket weaving. And welcome to Tender Loving Care. We're so glad to have you here. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Well, it's fantastic. Um, uh, we're looking at your art, and I know that there's probably a lot of folks out in the community and out as they've been out in antique stores and have seen pine needle baskets. Baskets, or <laughs> I want to call it weaving because it really is a weave, and it's a it's a form of art that's been lost. It's ancient been around forever. So can you tell us a little bit about you before we get started? Where sure. are you from? I live in the Elkins area. My husband and I moved here uh, about 24 years ago, um, mm -hmm. thinking we'd stay a couple years and we're still here. We love this artist community and the Buchanan artist community and that's uh, why we've stayed in the area as long as we have. And um, I started basket weaving about 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. But I got into pine needle basketry only about 10 years ago. So right? it's a little bit newer for me than mm -hmm. I used to do, you know, reed baskets and uh -huh. uh, grapevine baskets, those kinds of things. Is so. it a really different technique as far as doing the wider um, leaves as opposed to the pine basket? It's totally different. Is it um, actually, these baskets are not woven, believe it or not. Oh, really? They're, they're, it's called coiling. Coiling. So they're coiled instead of woven, and they're stitched together instead of woven together. I'm so um, a lot of people refer to it as pine needle basket weaving, but it's really just pine needle basketry because it is sewn together instead of woven together. I see. So it's I a little see. bit different than your typical basket that you see. I understand. Now, the difference between I see now it, with the pine needles and, of course, any sort of other basket weaving are those needles. Are they unique as far as can you use any other kind of needles? No, you really you can't. Use those. So, what kind of needles are those exactly? These are called longleaf pine needles. Um, lots of times people are familiar with this large pine cone. Yes, very. They've seen these large pine cones, but they don't realize they come from what's called a long leaf needle pine. I see. And so these long leaf pine needles um, are very long, but uh -huh. they also have a lot of spine. They're very heavy. Uh, they, they don't um, collapse when, the bit, when you get them into the basket because they have a nice spine to them. And that's really important. They don't grow in this area. I was going to ask. I don't think I've ever seen these in anywhere around West no, Virginia. Where do no. you get them from? They come from North Carolina and South. Is that right? So um, they're the Native Americans. This art is tens of thousands of years old, and the Native oh. Americans are actually the the ones that we're most familiar with using pine needles in history. And they use them for um, baskets. They use them for hats. They use them for decoration because they like other Native. Americans American groups used whatever was handy. Absolutely, very and this conventional. this is what was handy. Absolutely, right. they'd put their grains in it or their food or their right. uh, beads for decorations or whatever. And I'm sure, like you're doing now, that they pass them on from generation to generation, from grandmother to daughter to the next uh, to the next generation, and it's considered not only just art, but it's now family tradition. It is family tradition. And the sad thing is that the the baskets that were made a thousand years ago or two thousand years ago don't exist anymore because they didn't have a way to protect them. And as you uh -huh. know, pine needles, if they're in the woods or in the atmosphere, they will start to disintegrate. And so when their baskets disintegrated, they made a new one. Right. It really um, wasn't expensive right. to do either. Just go out, pick up some pine leaves and make some more. Some more. Now they would use beeswax mm. on the, the um, baskets to help make them waterproof as I'm well sure. as to preserve them. Um, today we use shellac. Oh, very good. Um, in order to preserve sure. the needles, and basically it preserves them pretty much forever. And uh, I noticed it gives them a really nice sheen, too, so you've got does. a lot more of a, a, a dimensional quality to it, particularly on some of your pieces. You can see the difference um, when it's been um, shellacked and when it hasn't. Well, something I can't help but notice on your pieces also is uh, in your, for instance, in this example, you have a uh, agate stone, is it? That in is the middle? an agate. Uh -huh. uh, right in the middle, and then in this piece here, which is fantastic, we'll Oops. talk about this in a little bit about the texture on it, but it also has in the middle a uh, walnut shell. Is that uh, that pecan? one? I believe is a walnut. walnut. I use several different kinds of shells uh -huh. um, or nut shells. This is walnut. Very good. Um, this one is a walnut, but it's very different than the other. Okay. They have. They come in many varieties of right. shapes, and I just try to match 
the shapes for an individual basket. Well, of course we have to show this one. Yes. You know, being here, <laughs> you gotta have the West Virginia basket. This is actually a piece of glass. Oh, very good. Um, that's used in the middle of this one. So is that um, how you start your baskets? You not start always. From the middle and work out, or? Yes, they're always started in the middle to work out, but this little tiny basket, oh. you can see, doesn't have anything in it except needles and the thread. Very good, it, but that's a very, that's gotta be very tight at it the is very, very beginning. Tight. I don't know if you can Actually, catch the inside of that. starting a basket this way is 10 times harder than starting a basket like this guess. one. Yes. I mean, just because you have to have it so tight to be able to expound out. And right. I'm guessing that's how your artwork works. We start from the middle and we work, work our, our way, way out. out. Can you show us a little of the technique on how that's done? Certainly. The needles um, come actually, they have a cap on them, and we'll talk a little bit more about those caps. But these needles have been bleached and boiled okay. um, to get the pine tar, the bugs, all that type of thing, because they come off the ground, not off the tree. Okay, very so good. So once they fall, they're picked up, um, and then the caps are removed. And it takes about three hours to remove the caps from a pound of needles. Really? After that. That's quite a bit of and work. And then just they're to kept prepare. wet. Because if they weren't wet, when I go to stitch them, they would, of course, break. Ah, uh, very brittle, yes. Yes, so they are kept wet the whole time that we're working with them. And as you might or may not be able to see here, you can see that the end of the needle becomes very light very, where the um, cap has been the removed. Cap was, right. So this coil, as I continue to show, um, so, and all I'm doing is stitching this coil to the row in front of it. And I use different color thread. Um, my thread is wax linen. Is that right? And I use wax linen because it doesn't stretch. Okay. It doesn't rot like cotton. Oh, very good. And the wax helps to keep it from sliding okay. as I'm working and keeps the basket tighter. Okay. But as this coil becomes thinner, you need to add a new piece of um, needle into it. And that white cap has to be hidden so that you're actually sliding it into the coil where it cannot be seen, right. and then you just continue sewing. Wow. So that it just becomes literally one continuous coil from beginning to end. Now, the things that are placed in the center, all that I have to be able to do is they have to have holes in them. So I'm always looking at things, and if they don't seem to be able to have a hole drilled, I put them in resin. Is that what you've done there? This I, one I is put in resin. Oh, very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was wondering how you got that so shiny for an agate. I thought and maybe you covered it And then cut out, and then, oh. well, the same with a seashell. Okay. The seashell um, has been uh, drilled with a dentist burr, like they drill your teeth. Oh, okay. Because very good. Because if you that. were to use a bit with threads on it, it would shatter this, the shell. Gotcha. So each one's a little bit different in how it begins or where it starts, but I'm always kind of looking at things and wondering, will they go into a basket? That's something that how artists, I have, every artist I've ever met, they're always looking and seeing new ways or new things to <laughs> incorporate into their art. And it amazes me some of the things you come up with, like the shell, for instance, and the shells from the, the nuts. Uh, I just love that. I've seen them in dulcimers. I've seen them in, yes. there's a lot of things that we could use just to shuck shells from our nuts to make all kinds of fantastic art. Now, and we lost, we had a walnut tree that we um, oh, really? used the walnuts from to slice for the baskets. And we lost our tree. But we've discovered that black walnuts are one of those things everybody wants out of their yard because right. of lawnmowers. <laughs> so we're very, oh, we very can good. have no trouble getting more. <laughs> very good. That's a very easy process. Now about how many um, pine shards do you have, pine needles, to make up one one way around. So I would here. say I would add probably in something this size, uh -huh. maybe um, 10 or more uh, of the needles. Now the needles. needles come, when they come off the tree, they come in threes with the cap. There's right? a Tory pine in California that actually comes with five, but that's the only one I know of that doesn't come with three needles to a bunch. Okay. When you pull off the cap occasionally they fall apart, but if not, it makes my job a lot a faster <laughs> because I can feed them, uh, you know, less often. Very good. Um, but it would take maybe 10 of these um, sets of three okay, for 30. me to do something this size. Very good. Now let me ask you this, get a little bit more into the math. For some of you, artists use a lot of math. You may not know this, but there's a lot of math involved. Let's just say, for instance, for the West Virginia basket, mm -hmm. how many needles do you think it takes to make a basket oh like this? Oh my gosh. Well, let's see if it takes 
40 or 50 per row. Right. And then you have maybe 20 rows. You know, you're talking... 200, 300 different, just of just three. Of three plus, right. So what while you you're do? working, you now, have a large like stack. Now, something like this takes me about... This one took 18 hours. We were going to talk about this one. This is a very unique piece, and I don't know if anybody who's ever been out, and there's a lot of people that love baskets, mm -hmm. and they love any kind of a woven basket that there is. But in this case, with the <laughs> pine needle basket, I can't say, is it all right for me to yes, pick it up? Yes, absolutely. They're um, very sturdy. You don't have to worry about that. Um, I'm going to rotate this around so everyone can see. I am almost guaranteeing that there's nobody that's going to be watching this show or anywhere that has quite seen a basket like this. Now, as far as conventional, it looks like somebody sat on it. You know, I would have thought if it were in my house, I would have asked the kids who sat on this. But in this case, how did you come up with the concept to do this? I know you didn't squash it. It is not no. squashed. And um, I always think we've had a lot of people describe this and a lot of people feel it looks like pottery that came off a wheel that was too wet. Very, yeah, molten. And just kind of sank on right. one side. Um, right. I actually started this basket kind of just to see what would happen. It was one of those experiments. And some experiments turn out well and some don't. And this one turned, turned out, out well. fine. Well. Um, however, when you make a basket, mm -hmm. the entire basket and the shape of the basket is completely controlled by the use of my needle. Is it now? Okay. It is. So that, let me just grab the needle here. As I'm making the bottom of this basket, you'll mm -hmm. see how I'm putting the needle in just with a slight right. um, tilt. Oops, I've got a needle here. Um, if I want this basket to go up okay. and out, my so needle like now goes in a different direction. It oh. now points this direction, and it'll start to pull this basket this way. Oh, very good. And then, if I want the basket to go straight up, uh -huh. I can stick the needle straight in. It will pull the basket straight. If I start to tilt the needle, it will start to curl it over, as this is done. Oh, very good. So I started by tilting it out first and then over um, okay. with both of them. Uh, but this is the hard part of this process. You have to get extremely good at angles. You're mm -hmm. talking a little bit about math, and yes. this, this goes along with that. Um, if you are not consistent every time you put the needle into the basket, it becomes very lopsided in a hurry. Does it? So you'll have a bowl that's big on one side and small on another, or is going gotcha. more going straighter up on one side and bowled out on another. So you have to get to a point where you're consistently using the same angle with the needle. And then you also have to be consistent with your tension. Oh, okay, because yes. if one side becomes more loose than another, you right. also have the same problem. Right. It won't stay in shape. Now, these needles, of course, are wet. They'll dry for about three days. Is that right? Once the basket's completed, it'll dry for about three days. Very good. And then it gets shellacked, and then it'll take about four or five days to dry. So it's okay. about a week or more after they're completed before they're actually right. ready for use. And something I did notice is we were talking about how you're using the needle and thread. All of the threads, and all of they're all so concisely the same lines, linear lines. You don't see them... Um, uh, different angles, different designs, they're all interwoven so that I guess that's another way for you to keep track of your weave um, yes. just by the lines of your thread. Yes, it is. And there are people who do basket, um, pine needle baskets, that use a gauge. Oh, is that right? And they put their needles in a gauge as they work. I've always worked by feel. Is I've never right? used a gauge, but there are people that do work with a gauge. I see, okay. So everyone kind of works differently with the process. There's Understood. almost no one left teaching this art. There's very few people left in the United States that teach, mm -hmm. and consequently, it's becoming a very lost art. And part of that is the time consumption. Ah, oh, yes. This basket probably, this already has three and a half or four hours involved. Do you have that? Mm. Yes, at yeah. least. And so, as I said, something like this is 18 hours. Well, right. you can't charge $25 an hour for an 18-hour <laughs> basket. Exactly. And consequently, it's very difficult to get people involved in the process because of the time consumption. I understand. They don't want to, uh, you know, do that work and not get paid for it. So, and along those lines, you've been weaving for quite a many few years, mm -hmm. to even to get to this part, because this obviously is one of the harder things to weave, not so much that baskets aren't, right? but in the general scheme of things, this being so small and being have to be so concise with something so brittle, 
I see that. How many years in all have you experienced in weaving? And did you learn that from college or in any college? Your parents? Just taught myself. You taught yourself? Yeah. So you My mother can't even sew a button on. Um, so it didn't come from there. Uh, so you just sat down one day and go, yeah. I want to weave. Yes, exactly. That is not unheard of, folks. There are people that do glass. There are people that do jewelry. There are people that all of a sudden start painting out of nowhere. A lot of retired mm -hmm. folks you'll see, they'll start painting. And they have this skill or this talent that just comes out and bubbles out. Right. And that's one of the great things we love about artists. And that's one of the things with tender, loving care that we want to, ex to express to others that you never know what that talent is inside that you have. But when you find it, that desire and that feeling is always there. And for me, I don't have any talent as far as doing the art, but I, my talent is loving to talk to the artist. Maybe one day I'll find that one talent. This talent is fantastic. Now let's talk a little about the different medias that you use. You're using glass here okay. as, as far as, or I mean rock, and you've this got wood. wood. And you've also got um, some shell on the outside. Is that right? Rock, gravel these are rock. actually rock. These are actually a stone, like a semi-precious stone, and I believe these are unikite. A unikite, okay. which is only found um, in Africa and on the Virginia North Carolina border. I've seen other pieces of uh, of this art, of but unikite. I've not seen the incorporation of the rock into them. You know, normally, you'll see a basket that will have probably maybe a, le um, a nutshell in it or nothing at all, just right, the just pine. Right, just the basket. But for all the different things that you're using in your art, for particularly like with the shell, you've just come on top of the shell to mm -hmm. do that. Now, I can't say I've ever seen that. Is that pretty much unique as far as I just when pine weaving? We were looking at shells and took one home to see what we could do with it. You thought I could put holes in that and right, then I could weave right. on top of it. It took a while to figure out what kind of bur to use, but once we figured that part out, then it worked pretty quickly. <laughs> pretty amazing. Now the basket at the far <coughs> end, if you pick that up and look at it, mm -hmm. it is, um, it has many different colors and different um, angles and shapes to it. That is just the thread that I use to sew. Is that right? So it's just wrapped around the coil to give it a different dimension and to give it um, some color. So every time you're doing your art, you're just, something will come into your head and you go, right. well, I could take the, uh, the thread, wrap it around the needle, and then use that to weave into your piece. Right, and that's, sometimes that's I great. have an idea in my head of what it will look like, and sometimes it doesn't come out anything like I think it will. It well, that's really part of the varies. experimentation right. process, right. isn't it? But then you come up with something like this, <laughs> and you go, wow, I didn't even know that could be done. And that, that's, that piece right there just astounds me. It is a very I, I really unusual. Now the needles are bleached and boiled, as I mentioned, mm -hmm. but you can only keep them wet for about seven or eight days and they mildew. Is that right? Okay. So they have to be used rather quickly. But I can take wow. this home with me, and mm -hmm. if I don't finish it this evening, I can put it, the whole thing in the wet rag, All right. get it out tomorrow and finish it. If I need to leave tomorrow on vacation, I can take my needles that are wet, Put them in the freezer. I'll freeze them. Freeze them. Come home, unfreeze them, and keep Fall going. Out. Right, <laughs> and keep going so that we can just. Uh, but on some of my baskets, I leave the caps because it gives it a texture, and it make this is more typical mm -hmm. of what an old-fashioned basket would look like. Would it because they it's much more natural? Have, they may not have taken off the caps at that point. They may be right. in a hurry to make that bowl to put something right. in, and they would just get those caps on. And I don't know if anybody can see on TV. If you see on the side profile, you'll see sticking out the caps that we were talking about at the end of the, the strand of three that she's incorporated and also has her regular without the caps, but she's got the two in there, and it makes an outstanding contrast between the two and a great texture. And I don't know if you can tell on TV that shellac gives it that really nice shine too, which is really amazing. Right. It, it looks all so brand new, but considering how long it could be sitting there for years, it will still look brand new once you've dusted it off. And one of the things that's nice about these is um, if they do get dusty, you can rinse them. In water? Just, just rinse, rinse them off. You just can't keep them wet all the time. So you wouldn't right. put like a planter in it that would overflow. Well, that was going to be my like next question. Right. Um, what is the maintenance? I'll go ahead and I buy one of these. Is there any maintenance at all that I have to do except for dust them off or right. once in a while? Vacuum. You can use a vacuum. You can, with a brush, you can um, rinse them off. There is nothing else that you need to do to them. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah, so that they're very, very um, sturdy and they really do last. Now, one of the other things, if you don't mind, that I nope, wanted to point sure. out, and it, it's very hard to see on this, and I understand that. The thread comes in many colors. 
And so I use dark green, I use gray, I have used burgundy, that uh, butterscotch, this is like an off-white. Yes. It totally changes the color of the needles when you use a different color thread. Um, the needles in this basket are much darker than the needles right. in the one that has the white thread. And I say that because actually needles have a, a real variety of color, but you don't see it unless you use something that pulls out a particular color. color. And so um, it, they do have a whole different look about them depending on what thread is used. And in that case, I would assume also by your stitch. If you go with a tighter stitch, like for instance this one, gives it a little bit more of a darker hue mm -hmm. than perhaps the white, which is a little bit broader, which gives it a gives little it bit a more, more of a lighter, a lighter hue. hue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the amount of stitches I use the first row of stitching I do um, is basically just to attach whatever I'm using in the middle. The second row is to get my spacing correct okay. for the entire rest of the basket. Right. And how tight those stitches are to each other and how close uh -huh. together depends on how large I want the basket to be. Okay, understood. If I'm just doing something very small, they can, the stitches can be much further apart. Okay. But as you get further and further out, um, it gets harder to control the needles if, if there's the stitching space too far apart in the see. curves. It's I very see. hard to control. Them. Now, let me ask you this. Now, we're talking about, in most cases with your work, it's, um, they're round, you mm -hmm. know, very round. Mm -hmm. But in this case, you've gone to like a triangle. Right. or a diamond shape. Now, how mm -hmm. difficult is that to do as opposed to the continual round? Is there much difference at all no. to get that curve in? No, there's really no difference at all. Actually, the nuts are what provide the change in the, if you notice, it's perfectly round until the nuts are added. Right. And by adding the nuts, that changes the shape of the basket. The dimension to three as opposed to the circle. Circle. And sometimes I have four and uh -huh. it'll turn out to be square. Um, this one, it turned out to be more of a teardrop because I only used two. It is a little over. But it's completely round until that extra nut is added. I should have noticed that. That's how. That's what makes the difference. That's what shape. makes the difference. Okay. Right. That's what changes the shape. Now let me ask and you this. And this one with a actually shows you yeah. a person that it is coiled, and I like that. They um, like to stay coiled on a pottery. Right. So that you can actually, when you buy one, you can say to people, this is the way this is made. It's made as a coil because it's a you can see the continuation. Now, oh, and then I see where you've continued from the top, and then instead of just stopping it like you would on all your other pieces, you've taken it and wrapped it down and around. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it gives it a whole different kind of a... Uh, a finish, yeah. Yeah, to it. And mm -hmm. it's, um, you can see where the basics were, how you designed it, and then you've changed it to a different... Different kind of... Now, let me ask you this before we start wrapping up. How high can you go on one of these? I noticed that this piece were actually straight. It would stand mm -hmm. about this high. Yes. How, what's the height that you can go on you these pieces? You could go as really? high as you'd like, um, but a couple of things would have to take place. Your stitches would have to be closer together, mm -hmm. and you'd have to be really good at your angles because uh, it, it, it would be easy for it to start to sorry. shift as it gets larger. Very good. Um, and also, um, you could use a heavier thread um, or um, a sinew or something like that oh, that sinew, would be yeah. thicker that would help to control um, the stability of the basket. Well, that's fantastic. Now, and uh, we appreciate your work here in Buckhead, and we love having you at Artistry on Main. My other question is, are there other places that you do your art, or do you display your art at, at other craft fairs or shows? I do, shows? actually. I don't do any shows. Um, I don't do internet or anything like that because I can't keep up. I understand. Um, I just, it's just too difficult time-wise to make any large quantity of baskets. Um, but I do sell things at Tamarack. At Tamarack. And I work at Artists at Work in Elkins. Elkins, that's the other uh, mm -hmm. art gallery that's downtown Elkins. Right. I there. have things in um, the Durban Whistle Stop. Is and that right? also at the Buxton and Land Street shop in Thomas. So I have a number of places where my baskets well, are Well, we want you to come down to Artistry on May. Yes. Because not only will you see Ann's awesome uh, pine needle baskets, you'll also see a lot of other artists that we have here. And in fact, we're going to do a couple more shows for the of artists here at Artistry on May. Now, we want to make sure that everybody understands the time. 
uh, that Artistry on Main is open. We are open seven days a week, Monday through Saturday, 10 to 6, and then on Saturdays, 12 to, uh, Sundays, Sunday. 12 to 6. And please come on by. We all have all volunteers here. They all want to tell you all about the yard. A lot of the time, it's the artists that will be in here that um, mm -hmm. Ann may be here one day. And you could ask her all about how to do that. Or even they offer classes. Maybe one day Ann will be offering up classes for her, her work also. But we also, as we close, we want to thank Greenbrier Almond and Tender Loving Care for giving us the opportunity with Channel 3 to come to you here in Buchanan to Artistry on Main. And thank you again for being with us tonight.